Officially, welcome to Happy Hour. It's the A-Game. I'm Rob Akampora doing this on a Friday. It kind of worked out that way because this lady was available. I had to grab her while she was available. <laughs> I took advantage of that. Now, Liz, I'm going to apologize from the last time. We did this about a year ago. I forgot to mention one factoid, but I'll do that in this introduction that I'm about to do. First off, CJ, if you scroll down on the photos, I would want, I believe, photo number one, if you go back up, because I'm going to set this whole thing up. This is her photo for the new album. Like a Girl is now available on Amazon Music and Apple Music. We'll talk about the music. She's got a new project that she has created that hopefully we'll see the light of day on television very, very soon. She's still doing her running thing. She's got a middle to prove it. And on top of all this, you remember her probably from All My Children and CSI and so many other things. Uh, I please welcome Emmy nominee Liz Vassie. I forgot to mention that last time. <laughs> Now on my list of credentials, I've had an Oscar winner, an Emmy nominee, and a Grammy winner. I've now I'll stay. Now I'll stay and do the interview. Now that you said that. <laughs> so glad you're back. How you doing? I'm doing really well. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. I was surprised. I mean, I know you're a fan of music, but I was surprised you took the time to record the songs that you have. And these are all interesting interpretations that you've done. Some are very traditional and some interesting twists on and i want to get to one of them right away i know you're a fan of the beatles love the beatles yeah so of all songs to pick in this situation because knowing the style that you sung with in this album i would have thought okay she could do let it be she could do blackbird and then you choose i want to hold your hand and you do it in a different way which i think is beautiful it really first off it shows the greatness of the beatles that you can do it anyway and the song is always going to stand out but you put a twist on a cover, which I always think if you do it right, it makes it even greater. So bravo to that. You really stripped this down. You really took it down to this piano acoustic vibe with the song. Was that the plan all along? Uh, yeah. You know, I wanted to do, I wanted to cover songs that are predominantly done by men or originally done by men. And yes. so I uh, tried to have my own take on them because I thought it would just be interesting to approach it from a completely different POV. And there was something I thought sort of was heartbreakingly, uh, there was an, there's an ache to I want to hold your hand. And I thought it would kind of be fun to, to put a different type of spin on it. But also I worked with, um, I have a vocal coach named Rachel Lawrence who helped me put everything together. And she's, and I don't use the word lightly, she is a genius. She's, she's just, she's amazing. Cause I'll go in there and I'll sing a song and I'll say it's too high. And she doesn't even have to look. She transposes the whole thing in her head. It's just, I mean, it, it's voodoo. I've never seen anything like it. So uh, all I had to do was run by some ideas with her and we rehearsed together and we came up with, um, you know, the, the cuts that I wanted to use, different things that I wanted to sort of, uh, you know, interject and, and, uh, just a different a style to make it a little more mine. But thank you for listening. I appreciate it. No, absolutely. Well, you know, I'm a music fan. So when I heard about this right away, I'm like, oh, I got to find the songs. I want to listen. I want to get an idea of what's going on. A couple of them, not surprising to me. It was like going, okay, make you feel my love. You did it the way you should have done it. It's really the only way you can do that song, but you feel you in the song, which is a great thing. You feel your passion and your emotion coming through on the song. Then on the other side of it, you take words, which I didn't expect the Bee Gees. Great, <laughs> great choice. Because I think people forget there is the Bee Gees pre-Saturday Night Fever. And a lot of people forget all the great songs that they have, like Massachusetts and Words, Lonely Days, Lonely, the list goes on and on. And I think because of what happened with uh, Saturday Night Fever, people forget that era of the Bee Gees, which was really a remarkable era. I had forgotten about it. I mean, first of all, my, my oldest sister loves the Bee Gees. She's just crazy about the Bee Gees growing up. Um, I am the youngest out of three girls, and I heard so much Bee Gees growing up. And I've, I've seen the movie Sgt. Pepper's probably 42 times with them starring in it. And, yes. I mean, and, you know, it ain't great, but it's great. It's a cult classic. Let's face it. That's a cult classic. Yeah. So, um, but you know, I, I just, I grew up hearing words a lot. My sister mm -hmm. was also a fan of sort of the pre-disco BG. So I kind of knew, and then as an adult, I kind of forgot because it was displaced in my head. I just think of them and I think of them singing all the, the high songs and the disco. Yeah. Stuff. But then I watched that documentary, which was absolutely incredible about the Bee Gees. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you what streamer it was on because I just speak into my device and something magically comes up on my screen. So I never know what the hell channel anything comes on. Anymore. I do remember Showtime ran the uh, documentary and I got to watch it too. It was fascinating. And they took some clips from some old interviews, but it really does show how they got from where they were through each era. Yeah. And a lot of the music, like we just said, you forget and you kind of go, oh my God, that's right. 
So the song is gorgeous and I, I really did it. Each song um, was picked pretty carefully for somebody in my life. So that one was for my sister. And mm -hmm. then uh, I really wanted to cover something from Radiohead because I love that band. I saw them live and I thought, well, I can't do Creep because everybody's doing Creep and everybody's doing it really well too, to be perfectly honest. And they're credit. I agree, yes. I didn't want the competition. So I thought, all right, so I'll pick a different one. So um, No Alarms, No Surprises was something that that I've always loved. And uh, again, Rachel and I just sort of put that together and, and tried to have a different spin on that as well. So uh, yeah, that one, that one was for me. That would, yeah. I see that was the off the board pick in my opinion, because yeah. you sit there and go, okay, she's doing the Elvis slash UB40 classic. She's doing Beatles and VG. And then Radio Aid comes in and you're like, how cool is that? <laughs> It's it's all the different parts lurking around in my brain, but I, I wanted to do it because uh, I realized that singing was keeping me sort of sane-ish during the whole pandemic. And I miss singing because I started out as a singer when I was nine, um, first in choir. And then in uh, then I started doing musical theater and I played Oliver and Oliver and then Artful Dodger and Oliver. I went, all I did was play boys for my... Wow. Uh, <laughs> I really played a lot of boys. See, I'm going to refer back to the last episode. And by the way, if you didn't see our episode a year ago, I recommend you watching this because Liz made a point of how you were being comparing yourself to Joe Polnicek from yeah. the facts of life because oh, yeah. you were the tomboy. It's like, and that proves the point again. I'm playing boy roles. I'm doing this in this show. What the hell? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, honestly, I don't think I, I'm trying to think if I ever wore a dress up until puberty and only then because I had to. I have just always been more comfortable in jeans and a t shirt. And, and, uh, and that, that's just sort of the, the way that I roll and <laughs> I had a big effect on my work early early in my uh, early career <laughs> but, um, but yeah the singing it just has been something that's felt so very me and I haven't had a chance to do very much of it lately so um, I thought well I, wanna, I, I can't bake sourdough bread I can't do what 99% of the other people were doing during this pandemic so I thought I'm gonna make a record damn it you know, it's funny you say that about Brad because I interviewed actor Jeremy London. He took up cooking, just for example, and you you went back to what you love. Like, yeah. you told me that a year ago. It's like you always had a passion for music, and there's always that little part of you, which I'm going to get into, where you see yourself with a certain series, if it happens, maybe being a torch, you know, a singer in a lounge somewhere and just kind of popping your head while doing other things behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. But, I would love that. Yes, and we'll get into that shortly. I will remind everybody a couple more times, Like a Girl is now available. Get the songs. You're going to be impressed. Liz Vassy is here on the A-game. Um, the other great news in the last year, you now have a show that's in the works. You got Mayim Bialik. I mean, that's a heavy hitter to come on board with this. Give us a little idea what's going on with this series because I, I think it's an intriguing concept. It's sort of... You may have heard the concept before, but there's a different twist on this whole thing. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's an actress named Marin Dungey is signed on to play the lead. And if you look mm -hmm. her up, D-U-N-G-E-Y, she's been in like 117 things. She's, yeah. she's worked with Meryl Streep. Forget, she's fantastic. She's yes. brilliant and a really wonderful woman. Um, and she was interested in playing the lead. So we started taking this out and about. And, and basically it's about... Her being a New York psychologist and having to go back because of a family emergency uh, to a small town in the South. And it's, it's loosely based on something I went through in my life, having to go oh. down to the South uh, and be with my mother um, when my mother was very ill. So uh, I started putting it together in my head when I was literally waiting in an ICU. And um, it's, this whole world sort of popped up in my head. And uh, and then I, I threw a little mystery in um, because it's a family emergency, and you start to find out as you unravel it that it's not it's it's not a it isn't it isn't exactly what she thinks, and mm -hmm. that there might be some nefarious activity in there that caused this in the first place. And um, so we started meeting with other producers, and then Mayim Bialik's company signed on, uh, which was incredible, and uh, as is Mayim and. Then we pitched it to Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers said yes, so they bought the script, and then we sold it to NBC and developed it with NBC. Mm -hmm. NBC is not making it; they picked up very few pilots because of the, the uh, because of the pandemic, and right. um, we made it right until the final cut too, oh. so, which is actually it's it's better because it makes me know we made something good, and right, right. worse because you're like it's right there, <laughs> like, we almost got it. 
But, um, you know, Warner Brothers still believes in it. So we're going to keep shopping it around. And I just feel lucky that we sold it at all because the climate has been so different because of everything going on. So, yeah, I think that's the interesting thing that I'm noticing. And it is you make a great point about how the networks have cut back on what they're putting out. It's very the numbers are lower. So because of the pandemic, budgets are probably lower by the network. So to get on there is a great accomplishment. And you do take that whole positivity in that, okay, we're close. We know we're close. We'll find an avenue for this. It's just a question of where's the avenue? Will it be the network? Will it be streaming? Could it be cable? Whatever the case may be. Yeah. I mean, that's the good thing about writing, in my opinion, as opposed to acting. I You can take a project, you can take something good, and you can still find it in another home. I mean, when I, when I was acting, I could go and screen test for something and get in the top three. And you know you're doing good work, but once you're done, if you don't get the role, it's not like you can take yourself into another network, do the same material, and get cast. So this just feels like it, uh, it allows you to take something you love and still try to give it new life. Liz, are you making it like a really a 100% transition into the writing world? Or is there still that opening where if it's the right role, I'll do some acting, but I'm really more committed now to being writer, director, creator? I'm, I'm more committed to writing and directing and creating, but I would most definitely do something if it was the right, uh, the right role. I, I still have an acting manager. You know, we keep our eyes out, um, especially if it's something where I could sing. I would do that in a right. hot second. Um, so yeah, you know, it just becomes a matter of the type of things I want to do and, and literally how I want to spend my time. And, uh, there were some things that were interesting from an actor's perspective in the last couple months. And I had to tell my manager, I'm on a writing deadline. I owe a first draft in seven days. I can't, I literally can't go shoot this in another town right now because I'm waking up drinking coffee and writing. So, um, you know, it's just, it, it is where you want to focus. And right. You have time to focus on. The interesting part of you talk about singing and acting coming together, we kind of pieced this together about a year ago when the rumors about Pine Valley first came out. And of course, we are talking about a lady who spent four years in Pine Valley way back in the day when she was a teenager. Yeah. 16, yeah. <laughs> so Emily Ann Sago would not reproduce herself. We, we got to admit that she's locked up in an institution somewhere. She's not coming out. No, yeah. that's it. But the idea of you coming on the show, if Pine Valley comes together, and maybe being in a scene where you're in a bar or someplace and you're just singing in the background and then they come to you and go, wait a minute, you would know how to write. You've been on this show. You are a writer. That'd be the best of all worlds. And I, I still hold out hope for that because it seems like that project, it, it, like your project that you're working on now, it's close. It's been delayed, part pandemic, part a lot of moving parts with ABC. So it's this weird normal. I mean, it's, it's, I hope this is not the new normal, but for now, this is the norm. Yeah. This is going to be it for a little while. Um, I'm, you know, again, I'm just happy that anything's happening at all. There was yeah. eight, nine months there where nothing was happening. And I know a lot of my actor friends are getting sick of auditioning for self tapes and having the zoom auditions. And I get it. Uh, it's, it's just a very different beast than it used to be, but at least it's back, you know, at least, at least there are shows in the works and yeah. If all my children wanted to call and, and have me come, I mean, to be perfectly honest, it, that show changed my life. I moved from Tampa, Florida to New York at the mm -hmm. age of 16 and lived in a one bedroom apartment in Hell's Kitchen with my mother and my grandmother uh, after my parents had gone through a really messy divorce. I mean, like this, that show saved our lives. It gave us a place to go. So they call me to do anything. I'll go. I accept craft service because I can't cook, but <laughs> anything, I'm going to do it because I, I, I loved that show. It meant so much to me. It's amazing to me because you, Bill Timoney, Matt Servito, who have been on this podcast, have all said the same thing about all my children. For you, it changed your life. For Bill, it changed his life. For Matt, he has so many memories. And he said he met so many veteran actors and actresses that molded him at that point. So it's interesting to look at all three of you and the way you just glow and bask about that time and how important it was and for you personally and professionally in your life. Well, it's also, I mean, it's its magic to be a working actor, period. And it was at the beginning of all of our careers. So for the first time, you're feeling what it feels like to be on a show yeah. and to have your name on a call sheet. And and then it's in New York, which I, you know, to me, that's always been like Disneyland for grownups. Like I, I fell in love with New York the first time I visited when I was 14. I just thought I need to live here. Right. So the fact that you're there and it's, it's also a very, um, it's kind of a safe intro to any sort of, of, of fame and fandom because the people that are into it are really into it. I was just saying this to my husband today, the people that cared really cared 
Yes. Not the largest part of the population. So, but you know, you go into a convenience store and half the people in there won't know who you are. A quarter of the people will think they went to school with you because your face is somewhat familiar. And a quarter of them go apeshit. Like, oh my God, it's Emily Ann. And it's actually a pretty healthy way to be introduced to it because you can't take it too seriously. It's not enough people to go to your head, but yet you kind of you kind of get used to people seeing your work out there. And it's uh, it is just a magic experience. I love it. Yeah, it's interesting because I think it does give you a bit of a grounding at a young age when we hear stories about, you know, during your era when teenagers or younger people are doing the acting thing and unfortunately don't exactly, you know, take the right decisions. You just seem to, like you said, were more grounded and had this really good outlook on it. And kind of like you said, with the percentages and everything, it, it, the fact that you're, you're standing here the way you are, I mean, that's a kudos to that without question. Oh, well, it's a kudos to my mom. I mean, 100%. My mom moved with me, and my mom was very, very clear that I could take my work very seriously, but I shouldn't take myself seriously, and that uh, I wasn't doing brain surgery. And, um, you know, she just, she was really careful. And I started in theater as well, and she, because I wanted to act starting at nine and she wanted me to start in a place where I would learn that it was teamwork and that uh, everybody worked together for the, the common good and made this thing together. And so, you know, I never entered any sets thinking anything other than a, I'm lucky to be here. B, this is really fun. C, when it's not, I'll stop and I'll still be me. And, you know, she just, she, she did it right. She really did it right. I hope. I mean, I, I feel generally mentally healthy. <laughs> Well, another thing that contributes to Liz Vatsy's health on every level, I want photo number two, CJ, on this because um, she is a runner. And I will pull, now take that down for one second. We'll come back to that. Give me photo number eight because I need to put this up here. The reason she was on my podcast the first time was for this film that she created, a documentary called The Human Race, which talks about runners from many different eras between the ages of 50 and 80 years old. Fascinating piece. Um, if you are a runner, you have to see this. And going back to photo number two for one second, CJ, there is a medal around her neck. And that was the other accomplishment you had this year. This is the, you were supposed to, if I got this correct, you were supposed to do the Boston Marathon. You wanted to do the virtual Boston Marathon. Is that what went down? Yeah, I had to do the, the virtual. Um, I'd signed up. Well, first of all, I did it because Catherine Switzer, who was in my documentary, she mm -hmm. was the first woman to complete the Boston Marathon as a bibbed entry. Um, she's incredible. And uh, she's the reason I ran the New York City Marathon. She she is she has become a friend, which I, it pleases me no end to be able to say. Yeah. So she has an organization called 261 Fearless that helps empower women all through the world uh, by starting running clubs. So I, you know, in, in the most unlikely places, there are running clubs and they're helping women find themselves and a group of people right. like mine. So she called and she said, would you run the Boston Marathon? for my uh, charity. So I said, yes. So I pledged to earn a certain amount of money, which I can't thank my Twitter and Facebook followers enough. I made it in about a week. And it was absolutely incredible, the support. I, I, I didn't expect it to happen that quickly. And I, I was so thrilled. And I was training for it. When I'd done another marathon, I'd gone through the whole training thing. <laughs> I run around the Hollywood Reservoir, and it is a notoriously bumpy trail. Yeah. And I am notoriously not the most graceful human being. My, I know, my times, ironically, were better than they've ever been in my life. Uh, and I was doing my 19-mile training run, and on mile two, I tripped over something in the pavement, and I landed. And when I say I landed, I landed, and I kept running. Uh, partially adrenaline and partially I was like, I'm here, I'm going to do this 19 miles. I'm gonna okay. Well, then I came back and I had blood dripping off of me. And, oh. I, and I go, don't freak out. I had uh, bashed my chin. Um, I had been carrying my phone listening to something and I fell on both hands. And uh, <laughs> this hand, my right hand, I'd show you a picture if I could. I have it somewhere. It, it uh, got to about probably 10 times my hand size. Like oh. it, it looked like it was from a different human being. It looked like I had some sort of prosthetic. Okay. So uh, I had to go get it x-rayed. I didn't break it. But in the process of all of that falling, I then did a 20 mile run the next week. And I overcompensated for an injury on one side and I tweaked my uh, shin on the other. So I went to a physical therapist who said, you can run this marathon, but here's what's gonna happen. You will probably get a stress fracture in your leg. At which point I went, 
no thank you. Right. But then all these people had given so much money. So uh, I went to the reservoir and did uh, the virtual, not fast, mm -hmm. uh, walked most of it. And I, you know, I, I, I wanted to have earned the money, but I also wanted to make sure I wasn't trying to run at a breakneck speed. And I, you know, I needed to take breaks. And uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll go back to Boston. I'll do it. I just won't train in the same place because I can't take another fall. <laughs> no, you can't. No way. I'm glad you're going to go back to Boston. And I just heard news uh, within the last 24 hours from ESPN that the New York City Marathon is going to reopen to 100%. So would right. that be on your list as well? Maybe not this year or next, but maybe by next year. I think if I'm going to go, if I'm going to train for a marathon, I'm not going to, like, I love New York with all my heart, but I don't think I'd run that again because I would rather, I'd love to run Berlin. I would love to run London. I think mm -hmm. if I were to do it, it would be a destination type of thing and probably oh, yeah. for a charity. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I could see going and running a half in New York, but the training, it's, you know, it's it's four to six months of, of prep and getting up at an unbelievable hour to do your long runs on the weekends. And, you know, I, I like my weekends. So. <laughs> I don't blame you. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And to give a plug to Catherine Switzer again, um, can I have photo number seven, CJ? Because if you want to know how 261 came about, this is the photo. She was entry 261 in the marathon back in 1967. And she became the first woman to try to run the marathon. She is the reason why the women's division came about. She is the first woman to have won a marathon. The historical presence of Catherine Switzer is just incredible in the world of running and our foundation continues to this day. So if you want to know more about 261 Fearless, find out about it. It's a great organization. She's and she's unbelievable. I watched her go and, and do a lot of uh, charity uh, dinners and chair, just uh, everything on behalf of 261. She doesn't stop glowing and it's all very real. It's a very, she's a very authentic just a wonderful human being. She, uh, she, like I said, she's a friend, and I'm I'm thrilled about that. Um, we've just become very close. That's that's great to hear. No, she seems like a unique individual, to say the least. Yeah. Liz, Liz Vassy's here on the A game. I'd be remiss not to talk about CSI Vegas, which popped up literally like a couple months after we talked. I was like, where did that where did that come from? I was like, I, I didn't see it coming, and it didn't do bad. I mean, I looked at the numbers and I say to myself, okay, between ratings and DVDs, I got about seven million viewers. And now all of a sudden it's like, okay, Peterson and Fox are gone, but Mark Helgenberg is coming back. It almost seems too good to bring you back for an arc here because it's like if you're going to shuffle in some of the old pieces and especially Wally Langdon's uh, character, the way it ended and, you know, that he was set up. And then it's like, okay, he's sort of in this kind of weird, we don't know where his character is going. So in a sense, why not bring back the old flame who's been sitting in Portland at least for a couple episodes? Well, thanks for remembering Portland. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, again, this is one of those things where, like, I, I, if if it came up, I would do it. I, right. I enjoyed, I enjoyed especially the people on that show and and of those people, particularly Wally. Like, obviously, Wally and I had a great time working together. So mm -hmm. if there was a chance to work with Wally again, and Mark, um, Mark and I have stayed friends, and she's she's just terrific. So it, but a lot of it, like, as I've gotten. A lot of tweets about this with people saying are you going to come back are you going to come back and of course of course and now that i'm on the other side of it i also know that it all depends it depends what storylines mm -hmm. are going to follow if there's an organic reasonable reason to bring me back if they want to bring back a lot of people from the old show you know i know it has uh, a lot more to do with uh the direction they're taking the show than it does with me personally so the so, truth is i don't know I, if they asked yeah i'd go play with wally again i think that's <laughs> nasty but i uh i would i'd go hang out with wally again in a second <laughs> cj Give me photo number six. I know this is from your Facebook feed, and you love this photo. <laughs> That's just a great photo from CSI. The thing is, uh, there, there was an article that came out a couple of weeks ago, and I forget the source or else I'd be uh, mentioning it right now. And it was talking about one of the saddest endings of anybody in CSI, and it brings up you and the way it ended and how people were just like, oh, my God, they have to be together. She can't go to Portland. Oh, my God. Come on! Well, I wasn't really happy about it either. Of course, but you know. <laughs> that part, I'll be frank. That was that was not my choice. And that was not my choice. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I, I didn't jump that ship. I got pushed, and and it uh, and it was a tough day to be perfectly honest. Like you, you sit on a show for five years. Yeah, I remember that. Um, one of the guest stars on that episode was Bill Irwin, and I've been a fan of his for so long, and I rapped. And I was done and I said goodbye to everybody and I was walking out. I had tears coming down and Bill Irwin walks by. <laughs> Poor guy. He must have thought I was nuts. I turned around. I was like, I'm such a big fan of yours. I think you're so good. <laughs> Bill must have been like, why, why is this hysterical woman saying hello?
hello to me through tears. But it just, so that was my last memory of CSI was Bill Irwin giving me a look like, okay. <laughs> Who is this person and why is she freaking out right now? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> He must have thought, wow, I brought her to tears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not knowing the whole story at that point, obviously. But uh, yeah, it, it, but it was fascinating to me to see the article and kind of it, it, the still the love of that arc of that story that was developing over the years. And it almost feels like, like you said, for you, but also for the fans, the rug got pulled out in a weird yeah. way. It really did. Yeah, it really did. Yeah, it, it was strange too. Um, it was, uh, I was actually on vacation in, in Germany, um, you know, and I, it, 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 let me just tell you, you can put you in perspective when you're going and studying the history of Germany and you're there and then you find out you're canned from a television show. I, it was actually the best way to find out because I was like, well, <laughs> considering everything I'm looking at, like, it was like, I'm chill, it's okay, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. And I, I came back and, and um, more than anything, because sometimes I think you get on a show and it's time to leave, and, and sometimes it is better for you to leave and to go after other things, but it's hard to do it on your own. So, you know, sometimes you need a kick, and sometimes that kick in the ass is actually a really good thing. But the people were tough to leave. The, the writing, a lot of the writers are dear friends of mine still. Um, and like I said, you know, they're members of the cast that I'm still really close with. So uh, that was tough because it's yeah. a good group. Liz Vassie's here on the A game. It is time for random shots. You've got something. I got something. So we get to share a little bit. I, I don't have it with me. Oh, no, okay, fine. But you you are drinking Japanese whiskey later. Yes. yes. What made you get hooked on that, by the way? Um. Well, let's see. I've always been. I, I used to be a martini person, and then <laughs> I went on vacation, and uh, I was staying at a hotel where they made a crap martini, and I thought, what can they not mess up? And I thought pouring whiskey. So I switched to Macallans and then I, I really loved that. And I stuck with that for a while. And then I went to a friend's house for a whiskey tasting and they had Nika coffee, which is not spelled like coffee and it doesn't even mean coffee, but C-O-F-F-E-Y uh, and Nika in I-K-K-A, which I'm I said. It down by the way. Thank you. Oh it's so good. And so I, I now have friends hooked on it. Like I said, it's selling out because I won't shut up about it. Everyone <laughs> Um, but it's it's the good stuff. Like I I just love it. It's my very favorite now. I I plan on buying a bottle and I'll find it and I'll have to message you and tell you how it is. But in the meantime, this is just flavored rum by a Captain Morgan. Cheers to you. Thank you for coming back. Absolutely. No, you'll love the Nika. You'll get hooked. Oh, good. No, no. I'm like it's funny. It was the same thing for me. I was doing working on a country radio station at this point, and they were doing a whiskey tasting, and I was the co-host of it, and playing spending three hours tasting whiskey and you're like all right you got to be careful too and i'm like oh thank god i'm not driving but at the same token it was like wow i developed a taste for bourbon and whiskey and it, it hasn't changed and it's like i always get excited about something new if i hear about it and i go oh i gotta try that so yeah. I'm, I'm always intrigued by that so i think you, you, like you will like it this time i'm random shots and i had to change it up obviously you've been through this routine once before so i had to make it a little different this time around this is basically, I have become the ultimate stalker of Liz Vassie, and you'll see why. <laughs> you get to choose one or the other. If you want to just say, that's not fair, I'll allow that too. But you'll get the idea because, again, knowing a little bit of your personality and your career, you'll understand this. So with that in mind, choose one or the other. Kirk or Spock? Oh, God, that is really hard. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna pick Spock. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Spock. I just it reminds me I I used to have a, a t-shirt company with a an actress named Kristen Bauer and mm -hmm. one of the things one of the things all your feelings had to be on a t-shirt. It was called Neurosecurity. <laughs> one of them was emotionally unavailable men rock. And uh, so so that's in keeping with that. Spock is is just delightfully emotionally unavailable. <laughs> <laughs> And before I get to the next one, CJ, give me photo number 11, because you are actually just shows, as you put it one time, your geekery. There you are. And there's your husband, by the way. Yeah. I had to get him in the photo, in one or two of the photos. But this is a Star Trek display. Where was this, by the way? Uh, this is in Los Angeles. It's by the Getty Museum. It's at a place called the Skirball. And um, it was terrific. It had everything. And what was weird was I have I actually did a Star Trek a million years ago. It was one mm -hmm. of my first jobs out here. And um, they, I mean, I did not have a big part. There was nothing about my part in that museum. But, but I have so you're in a Star Trek episode. That's, Star Trek. Trek. That's pretty cool. Yes. But, uh, but my friends, you know, a lot of my friends have been on Star Trek in some capacity or another. And and so it was like Armin Shimmerman. There was it was him on a on a video. And then 
Um, just all of these, Jerry Ryan, who I met through Two and a Half Men, you know, there's her costume on a, on this figure. And so I, I was, it was so cool. It was like all these friends I haven't seen in a while and there they were. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of exciting. That was cool. No, I'm glad I got to pull that up. Um, this one definitely, I pretty much, I don't, actually, I'm not going to guarantee that I know the answer to this, but in the world of Star Wars, pick one or the other, Solo or The Mandalorian. Oh, wait, do you mean, so. The, I'm going to say the movie Solo, not the character. I'll okay. specify the movie Solo or the series on Disney Plus now, The Mandalorian. Okay, in that case, I'm going to pick The Mandalorian. Um, well, and, I wanted to be specific on that because I. Yeah. I because otherwise, if it's Han Solo, he basically he's he's bad. That that'll beat almost anything. You could be like, what would you rather, Han Solo? <laughs> Which I get to do this time because we didn't find it in time. But this time, CJ, photo number ten, and this is the love photo, <laughs> for Liz Vassy. Well, there you are. You finally get to meet Harrison Ford. I blush. I look at that picture. And I'm You're blushing now. That's the fun. Oh my god. It was, it, it was the most amazing thing. It was so crazy. And the best thing was, and I know I told you this before, I was giving a speech about my husband. He was winning an award. Right. And Harrison Ford was winning an award. The best thing was that somebody who was at Harrison Ford's table came up to me after the whole show and, first of all, said he was asking about you because he loved your speech, which meant a lot. And then someone else came up to me and said, he'd like to meet you if you want to go up to the VIP party. I have never moved so fast in my yeah, life. Of course. It's like, excuse me. Um, Yeah. Where's my... Dave? Forget it. I left him behind. All right, fine. Isn't that funny, funny character where, like, the witch that spins and the bobby pens are all in the left? Like, that was me. And, uh, I, I went up and got to talk to him. And he also was so gracious to my husband. And uh, he was gracious to my mother-in-law. And, I mean, all of us just... Uh, we, we just... It was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. Because that that is the biggest crush I have ever had in my life as far as somebody in TV movies so i'm glad we got to tell that story again it's just such a great story oh, good. on another level now this this was your thing but what, and this is where i go dave i hope you're watching your husband because by doing uh cj scroll down uh based on social media i think it's scroll down the photo so i can find it. i think it's 13 i'm not sure oh there it's 13 give me 13 i'll explain why this was the moment. <laughs> All of a sudden, there's Kermit the Frog. <laughs> wow. That was really cool. That was uh, David had a friend who was working on um, the the Muppets. God, was it a movie? This was a while ago, or was it the TV show that they rebooted? But I mean, that's like you know, that's that's OG Kermit. That was the Kermit. I the love it. They put an OG Kermit. Absolutely, it was really cool. And uh, and we were a little starstruck around Kermit too. That was kind of a big deal. So, yeah, <laughs> I haven't seen it. I would be Star Trek around because, again, it, it, it's so bad that I can go, it's time to play the music. It's time to light the lights. Yeah. It's time to raise the curtain. All right, enough of my singing. That's bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> Random shots with Liz Vassy. Okay, as soon as I say this, you'll understand why I went here. Zach or Slater? Oh. I mean, I guess I have to pick Slater because he was sort of my love interest. In well, kind of, you kind of maybe have to, but you kind of don't have to because you're basing on – you probably watched Saved by the Bell before you wound up on that final episode. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm still going to pick Slater. I'm going to pick Slater. <laughs> I, I think I think so. And he was definitely like it was. It was so much fun. It, there, there are worse things than shooting a movie in Vegas in your 20s with a bunch of other people in their 20s. It was just, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of sleep. There was a lot of alcohol, and it was. <laughs> At least we're getting all the dirt now. I love it. Yeah, it was it was great. It it was it was <laughs> plus I mean that show was iconic in its own way. So it was just yeah. really funny too, because the crowds of people that came to watch that, it mm -hmm. was amazing. I I because I had seen it obviously, but I didn't know what deep love people had for this show until they started shooting that movie of the week. Mm -hmm. Even now, I got recognized at a restaurant for it. The, 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 I mean recently, like about wow. Of all the things that I okay, no, that's fine. I'll take that, no problem. Yeah, you know, it's like going this, this, but it was sort of the it was the way to wrap it up. So you're kind of remembered for okay, the final before they started streaming the older, the new version of what they're doing, but still to wrap up that version of Saved by the Bell is like going, you're a part of history, you know, this. <laughs> Yeah, well, I had a, a funny story on that one that, and Peter Engel, who created the whole thing, he tells this story to anybody who will listen because it ultimately ended up being funny. But there's a scene when I have to run away from the bad guys. I'm dressed as a showgirl, so Slater, so Zach. Again, boy, 
I really am not graceful. I tripped on something and I fell into a metal palm tree that was part of the set and I cut my face open from here to here. So Peter Engel does this impersonation and he goes, one, two, three, four, look the actress on the floor. And <laughs> take me to a plastic surgeon who then, uh, I didn't need stitches, but he took a big piece of aloe, put it on my face, taped it on my face. And right. so it, a keen eye will notice that in that movie, I, I have hair taped over aloe for, uh, I mean, a pretty good portion of it because I had a, a nice gaping face wound. Wow. <laughs> See, now you find out all these years later. <laughs> Random shots with Liz Vassy. Going to your passion of musical theater, pick one. Cats, Rent, or Chicago? Rent. All right. That didn't even hesitate. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. I love Chicago. I, I did not love Cats. I saw it in New York. I did not love it. Um, but just Rent, to me, I mean, now it's become everybody knows it. and it's it's. Yeah. it's but at, at the time, it was such mm -hmm. a new way to tell a story. And um, I, I was absolutely blown away by it. I thought, it, in fact, the guy that played, uh, the guy that played Roger followed me on Facebook. And I was... <laughs> wow, that's so cool um yeah you know I, I i got to see the original cast i thought it was a good and movie. i find it cool that you just get excited about something like that it's like it, it, it's not there's no ego here it's just more oh my god i'm being oh my god then you get excited yeah, you know yeah. it's, it's kind of exciting especially when you really love somebody's work and it's, right. it's uh it's kind of cool to get to see them in real life and uh, and to meet them or get to know them in some circumstances so yeah i, oh, I agree cool. i agree with that 1000 percent. absolutely going back to our last podcast you mentioned two bands that you are a big fan of green day and foo fighters can you pick one I don't know if that's possible, but if if guns to your head, you have to pick one. Who do you pick? I mean, Dave Grohl's kind of great, right? Like I, I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna recommend something to you because I just saw this recently. Uh, First we feast. Uh, the chicken wing uh, interview. If you haven't seen, go. David got him drunk. I thought that was. Oh, you, you'll see. Go watch it. It's worth yeah, it. I'm not even picking the band over the band. It's just the man. I mean, he's so. He's, oh, yeah. eloquent and and then watching him with that little girl drummer and just i mean i just he might be one of the nicest i've never met him but he seems not nice i hate the word nice he's kind he seems like a kind nice. human being very good word um, so so I'll, I'll pick i'll pick them only because i have yeah look he's on my bucket list i'm like going to any interview i i want girl it's so yeah. in my life i want to interview david girl yeah absolutely all right. As a runner, pick one of these songs. It keeps you running by the Doobie Brothers or Running with the Devil by Van Halen. Van Halen. <laughs> nice call. Nice. Yeah. I just was actually thinking, what would make me run faster? I, and it's, it's so funny. Some really random ones do it. At one point, I was listening to something, and uh, I was running, and, and Paradise by the Dashboard Light came on. And I was going to skip it, but I'll tell you, not a bad running song. because no, I can imagine it. half hours long, too. So, you know, that helps. <laughs> Definitely. This will play to your geekdom. Pick one. Galaxy Quest or the Orville? I've never seen the Orville. Okay. Then you know what? You're going to pass on that. Yeah. Galaxy Quest, I do love. I've yeah. seen that enough times to make up. I, I have watched that movie at least 50 times. My God. Yeah. Anytime it pops up, it's like going, oh, there's something. Oh, that's on. Sit down. Relax. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, the, the, <laughs> I got to work with Jed, who uh, his famous line in that, he, he's the one that goes, it exploded. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I followed him around doing the whole time. <laughs> so you're doing that basically you go, hey, it exploded. <laughs> nice. All right. You mentioned two and a half men earlier. I got to do it. Charlie Sheen or John Cryer. Oh, God. In what capacity? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that sums it up. Thank you. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> that's a hard one and you did what did you do three or four appearances on two and a half sure. I, you know i'll tell you the truth first of all i i absolutely loved working on that show across mm -hmm. the board i thought it was great john is this shows you who john is when i was trying to earn money i was trying to get money to make my documentary um right. part of it i did for crowdfunding and he saw that i was auctioning off some scripts from two and a half men and on twitter he wrote <laughs> would it help if i signed them it was like, yeah, I might a little bit, but he just offered to do that. That's who he is in a nutshell. He he's just he's terrific. He's everything you would hope he is. That's nice to hear because that's the, the impression I get on John Cryer to hear that. That's beautiful. 
Um, so he's great. And Charlie, to be perfectly honest, I, I loved working with him. Mm -hmm. I thought he was uh, incredibly professional. He knew his lines. He was great to act with. He was, uh, I know this is, it makes people laugh. He was very respectful, like, like really respectful because we had to do all these love scenes and stuff. Right, right, right. And, um, I, I would have worked with him again in, in, in a second. I, I really enjoyed it. And we got to be, um, it's funny too, because we got along to the degree where uh, the, one of the producers, where Chuck Lorre came up and he said, you know, you guys really get along. Do you want to come up and do more of these? And I said, yeah. And then all that happened with Charlie and there was you no know, show to go back to. But um, but I, I really liked working with him. So. Yeah, the, um, it's, it's, it's nice to hear that story about Charlie Sheen. We get to hear so many just wild, crazy, and not necessarily the best light of him. So it's nice to hear that side of him, and nice to know that that side is out there with him. That's cool. And I, I am very aware that there are other sides to him, and I, I love when people discuss that, and they're like, I know it's dark. This is all I've seen, and to me personally, he could not have been nicer. And that that's a fair assessment, I, and it's, that's exactly how I wanted it from your perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, random one, Beecher Mountains. Mountains, definitely. What's definitely. and here's what's older for me. Uh, CJ, photo number 12. By the way, great photo here. Did Dave take that by any chance? Oh, yeah. Well, we do that all over the world. We, um, every time we love to travel, we're travel junkies. And so I have, I mean, we probably have 150 pictures of me doing this leap, like in front of everything. Right. And, uh, and so we were out for a hike and yeah, he took the picture because the shadow was just perfect. It was, it really was, but it, yeah. really, it also, that's why I figured you were going to say mountains, no matter why I saw that photo and went, Oh, I got to use that. And then that was the perfect way to use it. I grew up in Florida and I, and yet I'm just not a beach person. It's <laughs> surprising to know that you would think because of that background you just gravitate to water instead you gravitate toward the land never water skied i do scuba I, I do scuba but that's not really a beach thing so much as an under the water thing so uh no definitely mountains <laughs> let me give you two more um comic cons are starting to get back into uh the business here in 2022 if the right circumstances were to present itself do you take do you accept an invitation yeah, I'm doing one in December. Uh, oh, fantastic! Don't ask me where. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that that mean, that means your alter ego from the tick will probably uh, find her way into some autographs for sure. Yeah, and it's funny too because sometimes I see people who've done, uh, you know, they're, they they dress up like Captain Liberty. They're doing they're doing the the whole costume, everything. They right. have the fortune, and um, it's it's really cool. It's really flattering, and um, I think. This one in December, I think Patrick's going to be there as well. Which will oh, be that's fun. great. Oh, my yeah. God. That'll be fun. So it's yeah. a similar reunion to the Tick, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. I yeah. wish we could get the other two. We should probably try and get um, Nestor and David to come along, too. Yeah. Cool. I mean, that, that even my even my engineer, CJ, is like, going, yes, yes, you have to do. He goes to a lot of comic cons. And my boss is a semi-regular on the con circuit, Ming Chen from Comic Book Men, who uh, – owns the studio here so he knows you know these guys really hit the pavement so yeah that would be a coup that would be yeah. definitely a really good thing and i'll have to keep my eyes open when, when you get to the east coast hint hint um i pretty much know the answer to this but i'm going to ask it anyhow as a former emmy nominee i'm going to go into the future you're winning an emmy is it for writing directing or acting writing so, yeah i think it's I had a feeling yeah, I think it's for writing. I would really, I think, you know, the, the thing is when you start doing something at such a young age, and I'm so grateful because I was able to do it for such a long period of time. But when you start doing something when you're nine, yeah. and you're waiting for people to invite you to a party, uh, you know, so you can go audition and get invited to be part of the cast. You, at a certain point, at least with me, I wanted to start doing the inviting. I wanted to build the family. I wanted to build the world. And so uh, it's really where my head is. And look, I mean, you know, also I'd write myself in. We sell this show. I'm, I'm going to recur on it. I'm going to do something on it. But yes. I want to, uh, at this point in my life, rather than looking at actors that I admire and going, I want to do that, I look at Shonda and go, I want to do that. Oh, yeah, Shonda Rhyme. I'm so pleased. That, that, yeah, that's, right. that's an incorporation onto its own, what she's become. That's amazing. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So but, that's yeah. where my head is. Yeah, and you're taking the first step toward it, which is fantastic. And okay. in the midst of all this, I didn't even mention the working title of that show is called In Between. Yeah. Is that still the title? 
Uh, yeah, it is still a title. Um, it, it's uh, it's a, a real place, actually. There's a place called Between Georgia. So it's, oh, I didn't see. I didn't know that. That's great. Yeah. Uh, very, it, and again, you know, I was going through all this with my mom, and it's all stuff that I discovered while I was in Georgia for a long period of time. And um, it's a, it's the whole thing is is highly personal, but it's separate enough from my life. Like the lead character is very different from me, and the right. person who's ill is not her mother, but uh, there's a lot of my heart that went into this. So I'm hoping we get it set up soon because I want to go shoot it. And I love this team. Amen. We look forward to that. Um, be on the lookout for that. Thanks to Warner Brothers for that. Uh, once again, photo number one, CJ. The album is like a girl. This is interpretations by Liz Vassy of songs that have been sung by men and putting her twist on them. They're outstanding. Go to Amazon Music. Go to Apple Music. Download the songs. You will be very impressed. And if I can wrap this up in the perfect way I can wrap this up, I got one more photo. And again, to salute you, the geek that you are, give me photo number nine. I mean, this sums it all up. There it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot going on. There's a lot to unpack in that, too. It's, I've got the ever-present rubber band because I run. And so right. I'm able to tie, tie my hair back. I work for Big Brothers Big Sisters, and uh, I wear so much black, and my little uh, is giving me so much crap about it that those nails, I had light blue nails. Mm -hmm. Those are for Zoe because, uh, you know, I was like, I have color. <laughs> I have color. And, uh, and then, you know, definitely yeah. Stormtrooper, although I'm a better shot than any Stormtrooper, but that's not saying much. What a way for me to begin season three. Thank you so much for coming back. You know, you know I'm going to have you back once I hear about the show and it just yeah. gets off the ground, so... I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You are lovely. Without thank you. you. So you. nice to hang out with you again. Absolutely. Hey, listen, we'll be back next week on the A Game. Season three is underway. If you missed any of the episodes, follow my YouTube channel, and you can find the episode that Liz and I did just last year. It's worth your time. Until then, take care. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and cheers to you.